Hello everyone and welcome to Wellness Wheel Wednesday. This is our second live video and I'm here with Bonnie Jensen Walker from Bond Star Accounting. She is a bookkeeper and I'll introduce you to her in just a moment. So I created Wellness Wheel Wednesdays as a way to help some of my patients, not, well not some, all of my patients to manage some of their mental emotional stresses in order to really gain the health and wellness that they need and deserve. So why are emotions so important in the presentation of back pain? Well let's go back to the beginning as to how back pain, aches and pains or illness or disease actually start in the first place. It has a lot to do with our central nervous system and the way that it's functioning. So the brain and the spinal cord are part of that central nervous system. And if there's a lot of tension, torsion, pressure that gets built up on the spinal cord because there is, um, we're reacting to the stresses in our environment, this becomes a problem. It's not good. It uh, changes the tone of the central nervous system. So what the body does is it creates some postural faults. So the head forward, the high shoulder, the high hip, the rotated hip, whatever it may be. And these definitely begin to hurt. So here we've got the aches and pains, the, the headaches, the low back pain, the rib that keeps coming out. So it is important to address these, but it is also important to address the tension on the central nervous system. And that can be done through a specialized technique called torque release technique, which is the technique that I do at Advanced Wellness Chiropractic. So of course, you can still get manual adjustments, you can get some acupuncture, massage, all these points, and that is helpful. But taking care of the tension on the spinal cord really gets you to the place that you need to be. But how did this all happen in the first place? Uh, as I mentioned before, we're reacting to stresses. So we react to physical stresses. So these are all those things like sitting too long, the trips and falls, and these make sense to people. But what sometimes becomes a little bit abstract about the aches and pains that we have is that we respond to chemicals just the same. Best example, and people may can start to make sense as to how this applies, is that if I sat you in a smoky room, probably within an hour you're probably going to have a headache. So that's just a great example of how some of the pollutants, whether it's um, from the environment itself or, or lifestyle induced smoking, drinking drugs, uh, can actually affect us and contribute to the aches and pains. But today what we're highlighting is emotions. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Emotions. So our, our strong emotions, anger, shame, fear, guilt, resentment, rage, all those things, they can really come from seven spheres of the environment. So it is how we feel about ourselves physically, whether it's we're worried about how beautiful we are, particularly for women, or how strong we are, particularly for men, or just our general health. Also, our mental health. Now, this isn't just mental health but it's uh, you know are we living to our brain's potential should we've gone to you you know are we challenging ourselves to learn new things how we feel about our family life you know or is there an impending divorce is there your relationships with your children healthy aging parents this all contributes to how we feel um, our social life so are we maintaining long long term long standing relationships with uh, those around us um, Oh, vocation, there we go, vocation, how we like our job. Uh, ooh, big deal for a lot of people. A lot of us are in employment that we don't enjoy. One, two, three, four, five. Then ha spiritual. So this isn't just necessarily religion, but it is also um, purpose. So how, if we have that connection and know what we're supposed to do in life. And then what we're going to be talking today is financial. This is a particularly big stressor for a lot of people. Um, money. Money can get us in or knickers in a knot one way or another. So it's one aspect of the financial is managing 
the income and managing uh, where our expense is going and how that's all balanced. So having a bookkeeper particularly is useful for a small business owner or for those wishing or who are in a current employment and are wishing to kind of branch out into a small business owner. So why don't we come over here and talk with Bonnie as she can help us small business owners or medium or large business owners um, navigate the accounting bookkeeping world. Come with me. Hi, Bonnie. Hello. Thank you for joining me on Wellness Wheel Wednesdays. I have a bit of a personal story. A few years ago, back in 2012 and 13, I was uh, had a big financial crash. I actually had an accountant who I discovered was not an accountant, and uh, yes, it left a huge, a huge ricochet of problems for me that I'm actually still currently dealing with today. I'm still trying to solve some problems that were created way back when um, and it's just I think it's a burden that I didn't need to go through had I asked the right questions had I done my research and all that stuff and it has created more than one strong emotion in me as I still navigate this world trying to fix all these mistakes so as a bookkeeper can you relate to that emotional stress that small business owners have uh, reg regarding their accounting and how would you if somebody was in a similar situation or looking to just not understanding um, accounting how would you help a small business owner in 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 my particular situation so basically we um, basically do an interview with the owner and we find out what the trouble was before and we Mm. kind of get them to work through sort of a wish list and we kind of just try to help them with some more processes and streamlining things and just trying to help put their mind at ease knowing that you know if your your bookkeeping is under control and it's documented properly they won't end up in a bad situation again but it's just a matter of taking their hand and and yeah. guiding them through it on like on every every step of the way That's I personally use Bonnie and that's exactly what Bonnie has been doing for me is that's a great great expression is just holding the hand especially if there's been a lot of confusion in the bookkeeping so how with that holding hand so there's a you know I feel that I'm not that disorganized but I, I when I look at my books sometimes I'm surprised it actually is a little bit disorganized so how do you help a small business owner kind of um, get it get organized or get a system going so that they can actually start understanding what's going on in their business so basically we we, we have quite a few different systems in place and we find out what the how, what they're struggling with so if they're very disorganized a system that will help eliminate that stack of paper so we have various systems like hubdoc they can simply take a picture of it um, and then get rid of the piece of, piece of paper so that they don't even have to have that disorganized mess anymore and then those clients that are made organize a, an envelope system with them and we'll get them to have an envelope in their office, get them to put the receipts in it, and then I come and exchange an envelope with them. So it kind of keeps sort of a system flowing, and it makes them feel like they're a little bit more on track with their their documentation and providing the information that we need. That's uh, Bonnie has set me up on the uh, Hub Doc system, and I must admit that is uh, it's a relief. You just take a picture from the Hub Doc application, and boom, it's there. Although, does Revenue Canada really say you can get rid of the receipt at that point? They can because... Um, it's a bit scary. <laughs> yes, it is a bit scary to get rid of receipts, but basically, Revenue Canada, you're either faxing in something or scanning and uploading to the business account site anyways. So, and what I find is with the thermal receipts, after a certain length yeah. of time or how yeah. much they've been crumpled, you can't even see You it. can't even read them. So right. it's like, you know what, you might as well take a picture of it while it's still fresh. And then it's readable 
all like eight, nine, ten years down the road. Great, that is really reassuring, um, and it's great. Yeah, it certainly makes life a little bit easier um, when it's done when it's done regularly. So let's say you have a small business owner. How often would you recommend for this small business owner to kind of keep on track of things? Is it better to do things weekly or is it better to do things monthly or should they just contact you if the January 30th is when taxes are due, should they call you June 15th? No, no. <laughs> I highly recommend either, it depend upon the volume that the client yeah. has, um, bi-weekly or monthly. Some clients uh, need assistance on a weekly basis, so it's important to um, make sure that you keep on it on a regular basis. You mm -hmm. hold it for a year and you want uh, your bookkeeping caught up, but for that year it seems like such a big uh, impact, whether it be dollar value or time, just trying to compile everything. Everything is a lot easier and quicker to deal with as it happens. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's that huge lump and then everything. It's yes. the same as everything. It's yes. kind of like, how do you eat an elephant one yes. bite at a time? Yes. Um, so let's say a small business owner is a bit fearful of the looking at the numbers um, and really diving in to understand them. How do you, because there, there's a lot of emotions with money, a lot of people will equate their self-worth with how much they make or how much they lose. Um, so how do you, how do you deal with that? Like how do you help them not feel bad about their current financial state if it's bad? Right. So basically, it's a matter of building trust uh, mm. and showing the client that you know they can communicate that with you. I understand that they're opening up their whole financial records, and bookkeeping is often often the silent factor that a lot of business owners, when they go into business, they don't really think about that when they're thinking about what their specialties are. Mm -hmm. So they really need like for us we really try to build that relationship with our client and let them know that they're not alone in this world mm -hmm. uh, there's more people out there like them that um, you know their situation is not very good either but as long as you have somebody who you can trust and communicate with and know that your records are being taken care of yeah um, they start to feel a lot more at ease yeah that's true. So it starts with trust, yeah, yes. in building that relationship. And I think that really um, understanding those numbers. So do you actually sit down with a small business owner and look at their cash flow or help them understand it so that it starts to make sense to them so it's not so uh, foreign, I guess, so that they can see that maybe they're spending more than what they're making and that, oh, this is why this is why these things are happening in your business. Do you actually sit down with a, with a business owner and, and kind of show them, oh, oh, you've spent too much, you didn't make enough, or you know, stuff like that. Do you do that? Yes, we do. So as we're going through and recording the expenses and income as we're going through it, if we notice an increase or a spike in something, we will try to make our clients aware of that. Yeah. Um, it may be that maybe they just did a little more advertising or something. So for example, that might spike, but we actually reach out to them to ensure that maybe you know, something hasn't slipped through the cracks that they weren't actually anticipating. Yeah, that's great, because then it just, um, yeah, and especially if it's caught, mm -hmm. caught beforehand so that you don't keep spending more than you're actually making so that, yes. the, you know, 2018 can actually be a great yes. year. So that's really yes. fantastic. Uh, so what makes Bond Star Accounting and you in particular uh, unique? So why would I choose to use Bond Star Accounting versus some other uh, bookkeeping firm. So with Bondstar, um, we s opened it September 1st of 2014, and prior to that I was in the accounting world. So I think what the difference is, is I've been in the accounting world I, I've as an employee and have gone through some audits and understand mm -hmm. what is a, you know, a, a liability opposed to an expense. Uh, also with Bondstar, we are growing with technology. So as technology changes, we try to keep up with that technology. We're trying not to stay stagnant because we, if we stay stagnant, you know, we're not gonna, we're gonna be totally lost in the future. Yeah, yeah. So no longer that general ledger type no, of with the ruler. No. 
pencil marking, all that we're, kind of we're stuff. We're definitely moving to the cloud world, definitely. Perfect. And it's all safe, so you're, you're, you're confident that no hackers, no great hackers can get into that and mess yes. everything up. Yes, the software that we use, the applications in the cloud we use, all of the, the companies are standing behind their product and saying that they are secure, they're as, as secure as banks, and oh. like they're, they're definitely taking every measure to ensure that everybody's data is safe. Perfect, that is reassuring. Mm -hmm. So Bonnie, I wanna thank you for coming to share with the, the viewers that um, some of the financial stresses that can come from running your own business and how that can be offset by just making sure that we have a really great bookkeeper um, solidly organizing all of our expenses and our cash flow so that we can have a better understanding and not have so much intense emotions around the money. It should just be, you know, I always kind of equate money or the emotions around it is like ebbing and flowing so kind of like the Bay of Fundy um, those are big tides versus you know like a little pond of water yes. <laughs> those are the smaller emotions are just much more easier to manage and they won't affect the nervous system as much um, which is perfect so if uh, here is our call to action for today if you have any comments about today's video please post them on either of our Facebook pages. Um, we'd be love. We'd love to hear what you had to say about today's uh, live video presentation. But also, if you can, uh, if you would like, you can comment or um, share this video. That would also be greatly appreciated. And if you would like us to reach out to you in any sort of fashion, you can just let us know either in the comments or a private message, and we'd be happy to help you. So for any person wishing to explore how chiropractic can help lessen some of the aches and pains or ill health that you're experiencing because out of strong emotions potentially from the financial sphere uh, just let us know that you heard caught this video on Facebook and we will honor um, we just won't charge that initial visit it will be a complimentary which is a value of $80 so go ahead and like like this comment or whatever if you want us to, re to reach out to you write us a private message and uh, we'd be happy to to help you out in any sort of way that we can Bonnie do you have something for our listeners I would just like to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be a part of your wellness wheel and yeah. you know this it, I I think it's an amazing thing that you have going and you know everybody has stressors in their life yeah that's true and we all have our crosses to bear and things that we need to overcome so yes. it's just a part of life and yes. it's kind of how you walk out of them that yes. really makes you who you are yes. perfect well I think that's it we'll see you all next week next week is Diane Matthews for sure she was uh, um, I anyways Diane Matthews she is a Reiki master and she will be with me next week so cheerio bye bye